Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, I thought we'd do something a little bit different. Apparently, some things are not going to be different. Storm is still chasing after my microphone. But what's going to be different is that there's no tutorial. And for those that have seen my past videos, you will have seen this exact backdrop. And you will have seen all the plants in the backdrop. But have you really seen them? No, you haven't. To today, I'm walking you through in my first houseplant tour of all the plants that you see behind me in my office space. So let's take a look at my working jungle. In advance, I apologize for any mess that you may see. This is a working office. So um, I'm constantly moving things around. And uh, unfortunately, outside you'll also get the view of my rubbish bins and my neighbor's rubbish bins. So please ignore that and focus on the plants, which we're going to do right now. So the very first plant, and I'll pop around the other side so you can see it with a bit better light. So this plant here is a Dracaena lorienti with its lovely foliage. Uh, this is a little one. This is a division from my bigger plant around the other side of the, of the room here. But this little guy is uh, really enjoying this spot. He's put on this growth here uh, this year. Hello, Storm. Storm has decided to join us on a little plant tour today. And uh, following our Lorientite, we have a group of orchids. And these are my no ID orchids. These are all gifts, um, or I have bought them to rescue them. Uh, none of them are in flower, and they won't flower this year. Right now is their flowering season but I want these guys to focus on not flowering. I want these guys all to focus on vegetative growth. And that's important with these orchids. This one, little one I bought as a seedling. So this one is Fowl, Midsummer Night. And the date on this, which is May, 2022. Hello, storm me, storm me. Ow, 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 ow. The date on this is May 2022 and that means that was the date that it was removed from the flask and for those that don't know about flasking and how that all works I'm not covering that today but um, there are lots of videos on flasking and deflasking and how how that all works so I might do a video about that in the future but at the moment we're going on a tour this one um, is in rescue mode this one did put out a flower spike which if you've joined me on my orchid channel at joyous orchids you, I made a video about cutting the flower spike on this one and why I'm cutting the flower spike. This one is a very, very precious orchid to me. It was given to me as a gift, but it is not ready for blooming. So it needs to focus on leaves, as, as do all of these ones. So, and this one here is, is a baby. It's a bubby. It's going to grow up to be huge. But yeah, it's uh, not even two years old yet, so it's not going to bloom. And if it did decide to bloom, I'm going to cut the flower spike same reasons. So I want them to focus on root growth and I want them to focus on growing leaves and becoming nice and strong. And when they do bloom, eventually they're going to give me the most magnificent shows. So this is my no ID orchids or phalaenopsis type orchids. And of course, complemented by my Lorienti back here. We'll go on to the next area. Now this beautiful big boy is my philodendron silver sword. Look at him and how tall he is. He's lovely. Absolutely lovely. And his roots are growing into the sphagnum moss here. And I could chop this right here and have a perfectly viable plant. I'm not going to because I'm happy for him to go up and continue to grow up and hit the roof. But have a look at his leaves. They are gorgeous. They've got this lovely silver colour on them, which is why they're called the silver sword. And they're a bit sword-like. Um, but this is a philodendron, very common philodendron. You can find this in Australia, at least. You can find this in uh, most plant shops and even some hardware stores with, uh, with nice garden centres in them. So we've got a little bit of, of discoloration here. That's okay. These leaves are getting a little bit old. And, but yeah, she's a magnificent beauty and I love her so much. She's just so gorgeous. And then she's putting on some extra new growth for me. So that'll be another big, beautiful leaf. And as she gets bigger, all of these lobes are becoming a lot more pronounced. But isn't she lovely? So, yep, that's my philodendron silver sword. 
This group of three plants, first of all, we've got Philodendron tortum. Bit difficult to see against all of the bookshelves, but um, I'll see if I can help that out. And it's a bit sunny, I do apologise, but not much I can do about it. That window is north facing and is flooding this area with beautiful natural light. This plant is gorgeous. She's losing now some of her more juvenile leaves. I've actually given it a cut here and she's now putting out a couple of new growths. Um, so she's going to bush out a little bit. Beautiful, beautiful plant. Lovely gothic -y look on the leaves here. Storm, where are you going? Further along down here, we've got some Tradescantia. Now I've cut this back because it was looking all spindly and wiry and a bit yuck. So I've cut it right back. And now this is the tricolor and this is the Zebrina back here. Again, cut them both back and they're now focusing on getting a, getting a bit of their growth on. And it wouldn't be a plant tour without saying hello to my beautiful ficus lorata, otherwise known as the fiddle leaf fig. Now, I decided not to have a fiddle leaf fig for a long time because, well, there's a lot of people out there that, who do struggle with them. And honestly, I didn't really want a plant with a lot of hassles. But honestly, since I've got it, I haven't had hardly a problem at all. It's probably due to the amount of light I can give it. I can give this plant a lot of light. As you can see, it's getting beautiful morning sun, uh, direct morning sun through a window. So that's still indirect light, but it's very bright indirect light. So it's about, you know, oh, a meter and a half away from that window. No burning, not a single bit of burn on this plant. And unfortunately, due to the sun, I'm having a bit of trouble. But we'll come back down here where we can see these luscious, beautiful leaves. This plant, for me, is a joy. As long as I make sure that I water her on a regular basis and she doesn't dry out, it's great. If you let this plant dry out, the first thing you're going to see is a leaf drop. So yes, give this one a good flush whenever it gets almost dry. And I probably err on the side of watering it a little bit more frequently than almost dry. I tend to use my moisture meter with this guy. And when it's for, it's four, uh, I give it a good flush. And I mean a good flush. And she's just growing beautiful. There's actually three trees in here. Uh, one of them, unfortunately, has broken. We can see that broken here, but that has still grown. So eventually I will probably look to gently stake this back up. When I want to repot this, I will separate that and stake it up so it starts to grow vertical again. But yeah, it hasn't snapped off. It is still working and growing leaves. But yeah, Ficus lorata, an absolute joy and beautiful plant. And behind my joy of a beautiful ficus lorata is my ever-growing yucca, about to hit the roof. This plant I got about six years ago, and it was so tiny. I put her into this pot. I've repotted it twice. Um, it's probably going to get a good chop. I'm probably just going to chop the top off because it is getting quite high. But I love this in this corner. It's just gorgeous. Time for me to remove some dead leaves too but she's just a wonderful plant. I only water this about once a week all year round and you know she seems to be quite fine. Give it a fertilizer every third or fourth watering. Um, I ease back on the fertilizer with this one because I don't want it growing so fast. And uh, But yeah, I'm very likely very soon to chop. Uh, if I can sort of show you, I'm probably gonna chop right here and she will branch out. More time before she hits the roof again. Most commonly an outdoor plant, but she's so close to being outdoors and she loves the warmth in here, so she flourishes very, very well. Beautiful structural leaves. Oh, I, I love this thing. I really do. To the right of the printer, here's my printer. To the right of the printer is my lovely Thai constellation. Well, one of them. I've got several of these plants. I've got plenty in the shop that are growing out. I'll put those on sale eventually. But this is mine. This is mine. This is actually a birthday present. This was the first one I got. Um, as a one leaf cutting and it's just lovely. We try to keep him at, try to keep that at the back but yes it does does need a repot. It's going to get a lot bigger than this. I, this was the original leaf. I think this was the original leaf. No this was the original leaf. That was the original leaf and it's grown on quite a number of leaves since then. I got this around a year and a half ago. My birthday is in March so 
Uh, I got it in March 2022. So that is Monstera Thai Constellation. Next to her is a plant that does extremely well for me. I've got several of these now, all cuttings from these plants. So you can see I regularly make some cuts from this and they just keep growing and growing and growing. This is a mini Monstera, that's its common name, but mini Monstera is really a, a marketing name and it's not a Monstera at all. Its botanical name is Raphiodoma tetrasperma. Now the variegated version of this is rather famous because of the prices that it used to fetch. People would spend tens of thousands of dollars on the variegated version of this plant that probably was during the height of the pandemic. But this one probably does need a water. I can feel that its uh, leaves are a bit limpy and a bit, uh, bit floppy. Once it gets a water, it likes to dry out between watering. But once it gets water, that will perk right up. And it doesn't take very long at all before you see these beautiful fenestrations. So yeah, Raphiodora tetrasperma. Now I'm going to move around to the other side and we'll take in the plants along the floor. This one is Ficus elastica ruby red. When this plant is kept outside during the summer months, it goes very, very, very red. That red is very prominent. But when it comes inside, it's not quite getting as much light, although it's not too far from the north window, but it does like that really bright shade. So when it's outside, I normally keep it along the northern fence line. So it gets shade all the time, but it's very, very bright shade. And this is a lovely plant. This is cold damage. It took me an extra couple of weeks to bring this one inside. I should have brought it inside a little sooner, and therefore we've got a little bit of cold damage on some of these leaves. Since I bought her inside for the winter, she's continued to go from strength to strength, and it's a lovely plant. This variegation is stable. Um, the red variegation I don't think is as stable, because it tends to be by the end of the winter, this will mostly revert back to the, to the green and the beige form. But as soon as you take it outside, its red brightens up again. I do believe that that red is, needs highlight to continue to show. Behind this one is my Monstera. Well, again, one of my Monsteras. This one is on a pole and continues to grow and grow. Likes to seek out the light. I'll come around here, actually. Because, yeah, she's got some beautiful leaves. Beautiful, beautiful leaves. And they're getting bigger and bigger with each leaf, which is exactly what you want. And see, she's uh, been staked into a large 17 centimetre pot, grows on a moss pole, and it's just wonderful. Now, I'd say I'm, I'm going to continue to go along the plants along the floor, but this one here is pretty impossible to do considering it lives exactly inside the Monstera. Not inside, but right next to and right, right behind. So this one is Raffiodora decursiva. This is a big viner. As you can see, it's got these beautiful leaves and I bought this out of a low light area. It was in another room that was getting fairly low light. But as soon as I brought it out and put it into this high light area, she has taken off, taken off. So much so that I've had to put in a trellis and I'm starting to wind her around the trellis. We'll get back to all of these plants pretty soon. And, and the ones over here too. But first, I'm just going to continue to do the ones along the floor. Raffiodora decursiva. Gorgeous, gorgeous plant. If you're underwatering it, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to curl these leaves inwards. And so it will create a spiral shape. That is the plant trying to create a more humid environment so it doesn't transpire or lose water so much. Big key for that one. So if you're keeping it in a pot, like a terracotta pot like I am, you're more likely to lose moisture more quickly. And if it needs a drink, it, the first thing you'll see is leaf curl. Moving along, I'm gonna cover these two plants at the same time. So we've got this one, big beauty here, with its orange leaf, the latest orangey tan leaf. This was very much a, an orangey color, is now moving into a tan. Eventually it will move to a green color. You can see the stems, aren't they just wonderful? This is my Philodendron Prince of Orange, and I have two of them right next to each other. There's the second one. The one that's a bit closer to the light is getting bigger quickly. 
This one down here, absolutely. Oh, look at this lately. Beautiful red and pink and orange down here. It's just stunning. All of these leaves start at the red color or orange color, really. And then eventually they harden off and become a bit more green. This one's just finishing hardening off. This one is in the process of hardening off. And this one is still fairly new. But they're just stunning plants. Highly, highly underrated. In Australia, you can find these at every hardware shop. And they're just beautiful. I'm surprised more people don't cover them in their collection. But, you know, they're not rare. So people want rare plants. I, I want beautiful plants. That's what I want. An interesting plant. So that's why these are here, because they are just some of the most interesting plants. I love them so much. Next to the Philodendron Prince of Orange on the floor is the Philodendron Red Cardinal. Now, I really did leave this one outside too long when the winter came. Um, I only bought her in about two weeks ago and the weather had really cooled. So she's got a little bit of damage, um, my fault entirely, but she'll bounce back. I'm very, very, very confident. She's already putting on some new growth here. So I love this plant. You know, I like dark, dark plants. I love broody feeling plants. And this one really does tick the boxes on all of those levels. I had to chop off an old dead leaf and the sap and liquid that came out of that at the time was this blood red colour. And I mean a blood red colour. Unbelievable. But yeah, philodendron black cardinal. Over here we have a lovely little Hoya. Now it's a very common Hoya. I can't remember the name. I'll put it up on screen. But this one is actually a rescue plant. This doesn't belong to me. I just in process of rescuing it and it's living here for now. But it's a stunning Hoya. I love this one. Again, very, very, very common. And it seems to love this position very, very close to the light side. And here we've got a Ficus bengalensis, otherwise known as Audrey. This is the plant of India. And unfortunately, I did underwater it a little bit. So it has dropped some leaves down the bottom. I don't care. This plant will just continue to grow up and up and up until I'm ready to chop it because it's reached the height that I want it. It's a gorgeous plant. It's so interesting. And its texture is really soft. It's almost like it has these fine hairs sitting on the leaves. Very, very velvety to the touch. Doesn't look velvety, but does feel very velvety. And as long as you keep this, like most ficuses, certainly like the Lorata, you wanna keep this damp and moist. So don't let it dry out. Again, another one with my moisture meter, I will more I will water on four rather than water on three. Beautiful, beautiful tree. And as this one grows, I will give it a chop and then it will start extending out its branches. But yeah, gorgeous. Moving along down here, we have got a Monstera Stendhaliana. Now this one is my half moon Stendhaliana. So I've got others that don't produce the half moons like this one does, but it's half moon after half moon after half moon and after half moon. And after a while, it does brown out a little bit like this. Very, very common to see this on variegated plants, especially variegated Monstera. No matter if it's the Monstera alba or the standard liana, it's very, very common to get this browning here on the area that is variegated. Rue, can I have my microphone cord back, please? Don't, don't bite. Don't bite it. I would like this cord back. May I have this cord back? Cord back? Back the cord. Oh, excuse us. Behind the Stantiliana is one of my favourite, all-time, all-time, all-time favourite houseplants. This one is none other than the Monstera Addisonii. It's the monkey mask variant, which stays a lot more compact than the non-monkey mask variant. Now, it, has, it is quite old and it's lost a lot of its leaves down here, but it just continues to grow up. I continue to chop it. It continues to regrow. And it's just a lovely, lovely, lovely plant. You know, where do you else do you see beautiful fenestrations like this? It's just gorgeous. How can you not love that? If you don't love that, there's something really wrong with you. But yeah, I've got a lot of my jungling plants along this row. They love this extra light that they get. And they just, they're just a fabulous thing to sit amongst as I'm working. Over here is my sad looking Dracaena red dragon. Now, it does have the dragony leaves. 
but it's been living outside for a good six or seven years. I only brought it inside last year and I'm going to give it a big chop down come spring. Big chop down because it's growing very, very spindly. Anyway, she's not really the most pretty plant in my collection right now, but I look forward to her being coming so and doing a lot better in years to come. Over in the window there, if I can actually just uh, come in, this is another Hoya. It's a single vine Hoya. It has, passing the Dracaena, grown up and grown up and grown up and has attached itself to the drawstring there, continues to grow up and continues to grow up and over. The other vine is gone so far up and down. So right now I'm just putting her on the on the Dracaena tree. Good luck unwinding that after a couple of months. I won't let it go, go any further. And the name of this is Hoya Susuela. And I'll put a picture of her flowers up on screen. Now onto the table. So here is my Stromanthe tricolor in active growth in the middle of winter. And that's what happens when you have a, a Stromanthe or a player plant that gets a lot of light or it gets the right amount of light and is happy to grow in winter, which mine are, they really are. I actually find that they slow down their growth in summer rather than winter. But this is just a fabulous plant. Now, I, when I got it, there was a lot of damage on it. I think it was June two years ago. It suffered a lot of damage, damage that looked like this, and whole leaves were affected. So I've cut a lot of the damage off, as you can see, but most of the new leaves and the new growth have not got such damage on them, which is great. And this one is probably easily up there with some of my top five houseplants. Just above that, I will include these guys in the, in the tour because they do live on my desk right now. So I'm just showing you everything on my, on my desk. These are water propagations. And this lovely, lovely, lovely leaf is the philodendron Dean McDowell. This is a somewhat rare house plant, definitely collector house plant, but look at those beautiful pillowy leaves. You could want to go to sleep on those leaves. And at the moment, they're just going through some water propagation. They're starting to grow roots and eventually they'll come out of their water container and go into pots. I tend to propagate these guys in my house, not in the shop, because they just do so much better. Now, what I'm not going to do is go through every single one of these plants. Um, some of you know I have an orchid channel. I mentioned it before, joyous orchids. These are all orchids. So these are all seedlings for the most part. I'm really only covering the house plants in my tour today. But if you're interested, I'll put the link up to joyous orchids where I talk about my orchid collection and my experience with orchids, which is, to be honest, nowhere near as much as experience with, with other types of house plants. But just to cover the genus that we've got here, we've got Phalaenopsis, we've got Sarcochylus, we've got a couple more Sarcochylus back here. They are Australian native orchids, a species Phalaenopsis with the mottled leaves, two hybrids with mottled leaves. Again, they're all Phalaenopsis. This little guy here is Honkoglossum, an Australian native but vandaceous type orchid. And then we've got the Paphiopetalums, otherwise known as slipper orchids. One of them is in flower right now. And if I might just take a moment just to indulge you, have a look at the face, the face. This is actually a species, Paphiopetalum. It's Paphiopetalum spicerianum. So I look forward to growing that one on just a beautiful face. Anyway, that's the only orchid I'll really focus in on today. Now over here, two very interesting, what we call elephant ear plants, Alocasia sabria, over here with the plain leaves. Look at the mottling on the stem. And the same over here, the mottling on the stem. This one's got a bit of a more pinkish hue. And on the underside of the leaf, you've got that sort of purpley hue. This, but look at this leaf. Look at that. This is Alocasia Jackie. She looks really prehistoric. I keep these two together. They're actually growing in pumice and they want to stay on the wetter side or damper side. They don't really like to dry out. Again, if they dry out, you'll notice leaf tends to die off. But I love these plants. They're just so gorgeous. Now, moving along over here, I call this seedling corner because I do have a lot of seedlings. Again, these are orchid seedlings, so I'm not going to get too much into 
them here. I will say that we've got some more Paphio petalums back here. We've got a Bifrina Harrisonii. Um, I've got two of those because I've divided it up. We've got some more Phalaenopsis. We've, over here, we've got some Docrilla orchids. They have no roots, so they are a bit of an ICU setup at the moment. Hoping to get them back. Oh, we've got a Bellina Phalaenopsis, which is a different kind of Phalaenopsis. You won't find these in the shops at all. These are summer bloomers. Same with the, uh, the mini mark down here. You won't see that one in the shops either. Lovely hybrid. And I've got a Kingianum cakeys, as we call them, or little plantlets that fall off the plant. I've put some in a pot. Uh, back here, we've got a seedling. I'm a part of a seedling competition. So see how that one does. There's a Cattleya back there, Cattleya Snow White, or yes, Snow White. Got a species here. We've got a species here. That's uh, Phalaenopsis violacea. Look at the shine on that leaf. That's very normal. It's also normal to see this a bit of wrinkling in these leaves. That's part, that's a feature, not a bug. And here we've got a Cymbidium. Now this wasn't a cheap Cymbidium. Yes, $50. Its name is Black Stump 63 Not Out. And it allegedly has some of the most blackest of black flowers. It's a brand new hybrid. So hence it's a bit more expensive than other types of Cymbidiums. But it's in Seedling Corner because it's exactly a seedling. So that there is Seedling Corner, most of which is all babies. And they're under these, under these grow lights. So I can keep them, they're on for 12 hours a day. And I can baby them from my workstation, which is, you know, right here. So they're wonderful to sit amongst. And how could I almost forget my lovely the chain of hearts here? But we can't forget this one, because who doesn't love a chain of hearts? Whoa, okay, I need to do some cleaning up there. The camera doesn't lie. So this one has been with me uh, several years now, and I just keep unwinding it, winding it up, letting it grow, winding it up, putting it on top, letting it grow. Loves, loves, loves. Just cascading down here. And I like her to do it. And the last plant we're going to talk about is this. This is some cuttings. This is the philodendron micans. I do have this on a pole, so I took off some cuttings a little while ago, kept them way too long in a glass of water, and decided to pot them up. Okay, the last one wasn't the last plant. This one is the last plant. This one is a no ID phalaenopsis, which I have allowed to go to flower. Very, very pretty. So this one has just started opening up her buds. This one I actually gave a name to. It's, got, it's a no ID. Very, very wily, lots of roots in the pot. Again, if you're interested in my orchid journey, pop over to Joyous Orchids. But I gave this one a name, Phalaenopsis Laura Tingle. And if you don't know who Laura Tingle is, Google. You know, this one I named in honor of her. And this one is not a big flower spike by any means. They can go a lot bigger. I'm expecting her to do better in future years, but I will enjoy her blooms while she gives them to me. <laughs> You can't have the microphone, baby. I'm sorry. Why don't you come here and we'll just say goodbye to everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on my houseplant tour today of all the plants in my office space. If you liked this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up on the way out the door and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.